One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're listening to bird language is that they try to make snap judgments. So when you hear a call, uh, you instantly want to either attach a name to it or attach a meaning to it. And really, what I have found, the more I listen to bird language and the deeper I go into it, the real key to understanding what birds are communicating with their vocalizations, with the behaviors that they do, with the body language that they have, is to not be so quick to make judgment, to just be, just allow yourself to listen and gather more information and listen for the deeper rhythm of it, that the, there's a rhythm to the sounds that the birds are making and they'll, they'll call and then there'll be a little bit of a silence and then they'll call again. There'll be a little bit of a silence. They'll make another call and it has a pace to it. It has a, a rhythm to it that we, we could actually measure, you know, musically and, and put it in terms of like the, the beats per minute that, that sometimes the, a bird can be making the exact same call at a different pace, you know, it, it just has a different pace that if we were to measure the beats per minute of a repetitive call, you would find that there's an incredible amount of variation. And um, when, when you notice a bird calling at a particular pace, at a particular rhythm, you can tune into that. It's not something that you can tune into in like five or 10 seconds, even like a minute or two. It's hard to really tune in with the rhythm of a bird if all you have is one or two minutes. But if you really just sit with it, here's a good one. I've got oven birds singing all around me right now. It's interesting to note that we can, we can count how many oven birds there are There you go, four oven birds. You can count how many birds there are. When they're all singing together like that, you can count how many there are by listening to the sequence. So I was hearing the one sing over there, then one would sing behind me, then there was one over there that would sing, and one over there that would sing. Four oven birds all around me. And um, now there's a little woodpecker. There's a pace to it they listen to each other and they take turns singing in a sequence that you can use to establish their positions and you can use that sequence of song to establish a pace that you know if you really listen it happens repetitively you know in musical terms we would say that it, it happens on a metronome and you know it's not necessary to actually know what the beats per minute is but just if you can tune into that rhythm and that energy over a period of like say five or ten minutes you can really drop into that sound and get a feel for the sequence of how the birds are singing how frequently they're singing how they're singing in relation to each other where they are in space and time then what what that really means is when the rhythm changes, you will feel it. And that is the key to bird language. It's, it's, it starts with listening and it starts with getting in touch with what the birds are doing, what the birds are saying. But then eventually where it gets to is that something changes in the birds and you feel it. You know, and it's, it's, if your mind is even like wandering a little bit in that moment, when the feeling shifts, it'll call you back. So one thing to know is that birds singing, birds sing when they're in a relaxed state of mind. Um, you know, and I use the word relaxed mainly in terms of like that they're not being attacked by predators when they're singing. They're, you know, they're focused on other kind of maintenance things for their lives. They're really focused on finding mates, setting up territories, 
protecting their territories, um, you know, letting everyone know that, hey, this is my space. But if, for an example, a hawk were to fly into this zone right now, or potentially an owl, um, or if a nest robber like a crow came in and started, you know, skulking around or some blue jays, we would notice that the singing rhythm of these oven birds would change and there would be a break in the pattern and they would start making a, a different call. They might change their locations um, to sort of go over and either crowd around the source of the alarm or they might, um, they might fly away from the area just to like, you know, escape the danger. It depends on what the predator, what the danger actually is and how dangerous the situation actually is for them. And we would be able to hear all of that in the sounds that the birds are actually making. And we would be able to hear that from anywhere within earshot, you know? So if the hawk were, were way on the other side of the forest, but within, you know, earshot of the sound of a, a calling bird, we would still be able to read that at quite a long distance and know that there's a hawk over there. The more you listen to birds as they sing and get a feel for the rhythm of the forest, what it feels like when there's four of them singing all really um, strongly and, you know, in a really direct sequence. And then notice that other times there's maybe just one of them singing and that actually tells you something. It, it tells you that there's some sort of difference. The more that we listen to these things, the more we start to make sense of it. And you get to that point where when something changes in the rhythm of their song, that you can actually just feel it. It registers as a feeling. And, you know, bird language is a wildlife tracking skill that has been used by human beings for tens of thousands of years. Um, it's you know, potentially one of the oldest human skills um, for understanding our environment and survival and, um, you know, being aware of what's happening around us and for, you know, finding, um, finding food even, you know, as hunters. It all just starts with getting outside, finding some birds and listening to them. And you really, you really don't even have to know the identity of the bird in order to start doing this. Uh, you know, eventually you'll figure it out. You, you know, it's, it's good to know to be able to hear a bird and say, oh, that's an oven bird. Oh, it's a black and white warbler. But really to get started with bird language and to start tuning into these, these rhythms of the sounds that they're making and, and to see how there's a rhythmic quality to everything that the birds do. You don't need to know the identity of a bird in order to get started with that. And so all you have to do is just go outside and start listening. Tune into a rhythm, get a feel for it, and just listen. And, and listen longer than you normally would. You know, if you're, um, one of the, the first missions I always give people if they want to learn bird language is to, you know, I ask, I ask them, what's the longest you've ever listened to a single bird? And, and just really tried to hear every call, every repetition of song that it makes. Um, and if, if the person says, you know, probably like 30 seconds, then I say, do it for a minute. And if you've done it for a minute, then challenge yourself to do it for two minutes. Once you've done it for two minutes, then try to go for five. You wanna just keep increasing it until you can track a bird and, and hear every call in sequence. You wanna be able to hear every call in sequence for at least 10 or 20 minutes to really get a feeling of that rhythm. And there's a chance that during that 10 or 20 minutes, there will be a shift and um, when that shift happens, if you're truly listening, you will feel it, you'll hear it. And, um, and that is, you are doing bird language. You're listening to bird language and you're starting to get bird language. The final thing I'll mention on this is, um, you know, when you hear something, when you hear that shift in the rhythm, 
all you have to do is go out and investigate and, um, and ask, ask some good questions. Like what actually happened? Did the bird move? Uh, why did it move? Was it, you know, being pushed by something? Was it going to feed on something? Um, you know, what are the birds eating right now in the forest? What are their food sources right now? And um, these are, you know, tricky questions as with all things in tracking. But if you, if you keep working at it, you will start to figure it out. You'll start to piece the stories together. Everything else I've shared on this channel about tracking and, um, you know, asking good questions will apply in bird language as well, because they're really the same skill, just using a different sense. So go investigate those bird mysteries and let me know what you find out. I hope you found this interesting. Um, I am having an amazing day out here listening to these birds. And so I hope that you get a chance to get out there, and enjoy some birds too, very soon. And uh, let me know what you discover. I will see you in the next video.